<laughs> now, so what was the motor that just drove this generator or that would drive this generator? Uh, this is a 40 horsepower motor. Now, this is a conventional motor. This is what conventional science would give you. This 40 horsepower is driving this big, big generator right here. 40 horses. Believe me, that's very, very heavy. Nobody's going to pick this thing up. Even Rick isn't going to pick that one up. This right here is the motor that got here an hour ago on a 2,000 uh, mile ride. This is our 50 horsepower Hummingbird motor. So this is 50 horsepower, this is 40 horsepower. Just to give you an idea about the size. This one right here, believe me, I would never do this with the other one. Fifty horsepower. And if you notice that the back plate on here is the same size of the whole motor here. So imagine this motor mounted up here on this and that right there. That motor and that generator is a home unit that will produce 30 kilowatts of electricity. How efficient will it produce those 30 kilowatts of electricity? Let's come over here and see how efficient this motor really is. You ready here, Rick? You're gonna to have to come for this anyway. Okay, now this motor right here is the Hummingbird motor. This is a very, very, very unique one. We had this already set up and ready to go before Ron got here finally with the 50 horsepower on his Odyssey, on his uh, ride. So we're going to let Ron run this motor too because he just rigged it up just now out of the back end of his car. He just got it here. So we'll show you the 50 horsepower does indeed run and it's variable. We'll show you how variable it is. But over here, we're set up to show you a 10 horsepower motor, test it, and even do some data on it so that you can see how much power is going into it from the 10, from the 12 volt batteries. We have eight 12 volt batteries, 100 volts of electricity, actually 96 volts. So if we're feeding power into this at 96 volts, it's DC, that's DC batteries. It would be volts times amps equals watts. Volts times amps equals watts. So if you got 100 volts and you had one amp, how many watts would you be using? 100 watts. If you had two amps, 200 watts, etc. So we can measure how many amps we're drawing. And what we're going to do is do something very unique. We're measuring the power coming from the battery through this line right here. At the end of the show, if you want to come up and look at this and see that it's going from the battery, this is the only line from the battery. That's why we put the red tape around it. And it goes then into controller. So if we measure the power on this line with an amp probe, we can say, okay, we got X amount of amps going from the battery into this whole motor. Then we got a line coming from the motor back to a shunt. When it hits this shunt, it's going from the shunt back to the batteries. This is a shunt so that we can measure the power on the other side. I'm going to let my assistant tell you how we measure the power on that side. All right, the, the shunt is a 50 millivolt, 50 amp shunt. So each millivolt of voltage drop across the shunt equals one amp. So if you hit, see one amp or one and a half amp, that's one and a, or one and a half millivolt, that's one and a half amp. Okay, so it's a one to one ratio, millivolts to amps. So whatever this says in millivolts back across this shunt is how many millivolts that are what? Going back from the motor toward the battery. So we're feeding from the battery, going back toward the battery because believe it or not, contrary to conventional wisdom, this unit right here, and we do have data with this on scope, so you can get that available. We did a tour with this on the scope. We are feeding power back and forth. We got a DC uh, source coming to this motor, and this motor is sending power back to the source. That is an AC 
wave. So we're getting AC power from DC, uh, DC source. It's flowing both directions, alternating current. So as it flows in, we measure it here. As it flows back, we measure it here. Now, wouldn't it be then, if you had a source of X and you were sending back Y, that X minus Y was what the motor was using? If you were sending one to the motor, or say two to the motor and getting one back, how many would the motor be using? One. So actually what you would do to measure this is you would measure the power flowing in. So we'll take a reading on that. Then you would measure the power flowing back. We'll take a reading on that. And the difference between those two is the amount of amperage that we're using. We all know the voltage. It's 100 volts because you've got eight 12-volt batteries here, 96 volts. So we'll turn this on and we'll do that. Now we're also going to light the lights. We're going to put a load on this because right here, this is a little 10 horsepower motor. Has anyone here ever seen a 10 horsepower motor before, a conventional one? How big is it? And this right here is a 10 horsepower motor. Isn't that a whole lot smaller? That's a lot smaller than any normal 10 horsepower motor. And so this is a 10 horsepower motor. Now it will easily run this four kilowatt generator. So we have a four kilowatt generator and we have four rows of 10 light bulbs, 100 watts per bulb. So four rows of 10 100 watt light bulbs. That's four kilowatts of electricity. This little 10 horsepower motor is gonna be making 10 kilo, or four, four kilowatts of electricity and we're going to see with our own eyes the amount of electricity that it is using to do that, okay? Okay, there's the reading. Okay, we got a reading of 1.0. Anyway, go ahead and run it up, ramp it up a little. Go ahead and ramp it up. Now he's gonna ramp it on up. Now he just lit the lights. Actually, we are, we are, now it's coming down. You see it coming down? So it was up there that just came right down. As soon as it gets past a certain RPM, it comes down. Now, where's it at right now? Can you read it? Yeah, you move your thumb. Can you read it? No, hold it. Angle it up more. Like Say that. like that? No, the other way. Turn the red part up and the... Red yeah. part up. There. How about like that? Can yeah, you read that's it? perfect right there. 2.3? Okay, here you go. What does it say? How much? 1.2? Okay, this is 2 point, this was 2.1 or 2.3, and that one's 1 1.2. So, 2.3 is coming from here, going into the motor. 1.2 is coming back again. I just moved it. 1.2 is coming back again to the batteries. So if we're taking and we're lighting four light bulbs, four rows of light bulbs, 100 watt light bulbs. Now, that would be one amp difference, right? One amp difference at 100 volts is how many watts? Somebody got it? One amp at 100 volts. I want to get over here if I have to pull that thing off. One of these light bulbs right here is a 100 watt light bulb. One amp at 100 volts is 100 watts. So here's the point. You see the power it takes to light that light bulb? That's how much power that motor is drawing from the battery. Do you see the light bulbs that are lit? 40. If you're drawing enough power to light one light bulb and you're lighting 40 light bulbs, what's the relationship? 40 to 1. That's good enough, Rick. Now, you would say, any scientist would say, you're out of your ever-loving mind. There's no way in the world you can be drawing 100 watts of power to getting 4 kilowatts of energy. You can't do it. Because there, can't, there isn't enough power in these batteries that you could be doing this. And so how could you possibly do this on these 12 volt batteries. Well, it's real simple for you to do it because the power isn't coming from the 12 volt batteries. Where is the power coming from to make this motor run? 
We all know that there's no such thing as, as, as energy being created or destroyed, so it's not like we're just getting it from nowhere. It has to be coming from somewhere, and that's exactly right. It's coming from the magnets. So the power of the magnets inside this motor are actually taking energy from magnetic forces, just permanent magnets that always are magnetic. How long does a permanent magnet stay magnetized? Permanently. Well, we had one guy today, Walt today was talking about the batteries that he's using are good for 99 years. So for 99 years, you could be sitting here and running and then somewhere along the line, you're gonna to have to change the batteries. I mean, the uh, magnets in the motor. So 99 years from now, you're gonna to have to turn it in. So it will sit and run and run and run and run and run with a little amount of energy in and a large amount of energy out. Now, what I'll do is have Ron just come here. If he's available there, we'll have him come out and turn on this motor here, unless you can, Rick. Ron, um, I got a whole audience of people here, and I know you're tired, but what I thought we might do is run that 50 horsepower. I had to give me a painkiller for this shoulder. It was just killing me. But, uh, you okay? You gonna be all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, in 15 minutes or so, it should, with a thousand milligrams of hydrocortisone, it should quit hurt. <laughs> we'll always swear that it should have. Well, we got a big old belt of something back there, too, probably. Okay, now this is the 50 horsepower here. Now, this just got bounced 2,000 miles, and Ron just came in. There we go. Okay, there's this 50 horsepower motor right here, same size. That would be the driver just as efficient as the one we just tested. That one was set up to test exactly the same technology. And so over there, you were seeing this input to output over here that was incredible. You would have that technology connected to that um, generator. And so here you are, and you can vary it. Ron can show you right here that if you even wanted to do something exotic, like put this onto a car, he can show you how effective this could be. so that it would behave so that the little old lady from Pasadena wouldn't have to go to school to learn how to drive an electric car. Well, it, it, it drives just like a regular gasoline car. Just step on it and go. Thanks a lot, Ron. But see, I had a problem working this out. I even put circuits in here so that reverse, in case that somebody wanted to use reverse on here to back up, which I did in a, in a Sport Fury one time. I met this guy going down the highway. He was doing 50 miles an hour in the opposite direction. So I stomped on the brakes, hit reverse, and out running. <laughs> and I, when I come around to him backwards, he, he liked to run off the road, scared the hell out of me. <laughs> he says, don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> well, I got to thinking that somebody could be as crazy as I am and try to go full speed in reverse. So I put a, put a place for a relay in here in the event that, that we was to hook this up for for using the motor for reverse instead of using the transmission with the low speed why the uh, they couldn't achieve 50 miles an hour in reverse and drive out the back side of the barn you know it it could it could happen okay yeah 
try to make everything as safe as you can because uh, the saying that I've used is we try to make it idiot proof. And in making things idiot proof, sometimes they have to be a little bit hard to, hard to make a mistake with. But on the other hand, we keep people from killing each other too accidentally. Yeah, well, thanks a million for running it for us. So you got a foot feed, feed right here. You can drive this up or down based upon the foot feed, just like you would drive a normal car engine. So if you have any ideas about that, like possibly sometime throwing that into a car, that's uh, hold that thought. That's where we're headed. Also, putting on the back end of this right over here so that you can run the generator and you can provide 30 kilowatts of electricity at your house Hold that thought too, because that's exactly where we're going there too. We'll let you get some sleep, Ron. Or do you? Do you? Yep. Yeah. We'll sit. Go ahead and get some sleep, buddy. So now. that you can put the amount, use the amount of electricity through the batteries to light that light bulb right there, and yet you're lighting all of those light bulbs, where in the world would you get the power to have that motor continually run? Couldn't you just put some of the power that you have there right back into the process? That's exactly what we are doing. And over here, and we're putting together the technology right now to do that, to take the excess power back from this, put it right back into the process, and it just sits there and runs and runs and runs. Then that little motor right here, sitting right up here, because we didn't know that Ron would be able to make it here, so we couldn't mount that one here now, and that is the home unit that we're talking about. So that motor on that generator, and what does that mean? That means that I've never seen these motors run hot ever. You feel them, they don't get hot. And so that motor up there is an incredibly serviceable motor, and you're running on a generator that all you gotta do is just, anytime it runs out of poop with one of the windings, just pop the windings out and pop another winding in. So that unit will produce 30 kilowatts of electricity. That's the unit that we intend to put on people's houses we may put up something here that's a little smaller than this that produces less kilowatts than that. Mm -hmm. 